I don't think I have to go for those through again, okay. And, re well, TPM was quite unpopular for, for some years, but I think like during the last couple of years, it, it's become more, more and more important because people have realized that, that there does not exist a DRM implementation based on TPM. I don't think there, there has ever existed one. And, and the desktop adaptation is, is increasing. I mean, all the Chromebooks are using TPM for, for, for secure boot. And also, also cloud services are beginning, beginning, beginning to provide this service. I think the Azure is the first one that will have this available. Uh, and I don't really know the IoT space, but I've heard that, that, that it's becoming more important also in, in that space for uh, authentication. Uh, here's some history. Uh, as I said, down to 1.0, there has been basic key management and attestation and hashing and, and that basic functionality. With 1.2, we, we got this direct anonymous attestation, which is different from, from like having, having CA-based attestations in a way that you can have like a single public key for a group and multiple private keys that associate to that group. So, so, so you can attest to a service without, without identifying yourself. And, and with TPM 2.0, well, it, it, it has a lot of new features. These are the ones that, that I've been dealing with. There, there are probably much more stuff in it. But there's, I think the most important one is the algorithm agility, not only because SHA-1 is getting old, but, but because Russia and China want, want to use their own encryption algorithms algorithms and and then there's this this police based authorization which is kind of kind of kind of enhanced version of the of just having being able to you know seal stuff with PCRs and passwords you can you can basically make a lo logical expression of the TPM state that that it must be in order to be able to unseal a secret. And, and also there's symmetric encryption exposed to the, in the API. Okay. If these, these slides were contributed by Peter. This shows uh, how many patches we have per release. It's been quite steady. There are some spikes here and there. That big spike is TPM2 support <laughs> in 4.0. But, and, and this, this shows the number of lines from, from 2.6.11 release. So our size is rapidly increasing. And, and the discussion is heating <laughs> all the time. Mainly because of TPM2, I think, and, and the interest for, for measured boot and stuff like that. People are actually starting to take advantage of, of the TPM. These are the features that we've been working on. Like during the last couple of years, I, I listed from that time period because when I looked at, at, at like previous security summits, there hasn't been like TPM update for a while. So, 
Vai lá. When I started to develop TPM2 support, I think like, like the 90% of the work was actually cleaning up the subsystem, fixing bugs. There were some users, there were some race conditions with, with the user space, especially related to SysFS attributes that need to be fixed before we, we could kind of sanely add the TPM2 support. We have now like, we've moved from MISC to, to our own device class TPM in order to have like stable SysFS attributes. And yeah, and, and the TPM2 support starts to be quite stable, except for the IMA. So we have, we have trusted keys. You can seal them with passport and PCRs or, 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 or any kind of policy you want to define. And, and then there's virtual TPM support, which, which, which is quite similar to pseudo TTI. -wise. So we have this PTPMX device that you can use to create these pseudo TPM devices and, and you get the file descriptor when you call this Yoctol to that device and, and you, can, you can have like, like a emulator or whatever on the other side or I think the use case in production would be to have like, like, like cloud service where you, where you get the file descript where, where, where you have like a, maybe like a separate server for, for TPMs. This virtual TPM support. Yeah. It's well, I not not really, not really. It's 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 more like 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 well, like. Actually, the TSS spec allows UI that so you can you can fully emulate TPM and QMU, right? Yes. But if you do that, you don't have the assurance that. It's this, this is more like for containers, so you, it's it's almost exactly like pseudo TTY wise. So you. you when you call this Yochtol, you get like a file descriptor and device node, and then you can like like have a, have a emulator on the other end, and and when you open the device, the traffic goes to the emulator. But there is also a standard that would allow us to virtualize a real TPM with TPM. Exactly. So the that's the TCG, and that's what we need, that. not the other. But that's not what we have. To. Okay. Uh, another larger change is, is, is this multi backend support for the TIS driver. So previous, previously, but with 1.2, there was only this memory map, but IO version available, standardized by TCG, but recently TCG has standardized also, also SPI and Y2. To see where based based versions to write write to the to the re, 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 registers and there's been a lot of new hardware support. And the future developments. So the first one it's not really high priority, but it, it, it would be good to do at some point so that, that we could compile out a 1.2 support for, for you, know, you know, embedded devices in order to like re reduce the attack surface and, 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 and reduce the size of the kernel. Uh, and, and the second one is something that Peter suggested and I kind of agree that we should, we should remove all the TPM 1.1b drivers at some point from the subsystem because every time we update the framework, somehow we need to kind of mirror the changes to these drivers and nobody has the hardware so we cannot test any of those changes. Uh, Then there's this, the third bullet is 
kind of trivial. So, so we have now the framework to have multiple backends for TPMT. So, so some, someone just should just write the code for the Y2C backend. And then there's this internal access broker that I talked about yesterday. So, so instead of having a daemon in, in, in the user space, we could do, do the session swapping in the, in the kernel. And that's something that I'm planning to work on next. And then there's, I think these last two are kind of related. I, I think they have to be implemented kind of at the same time, or, or maybe the event log support has, has to be implemented before, before we can add the algorithmic agility to IMA. Uh, I promise to describe my, my, my plans for, for this internal access broker. I did all the, the plan has been kind of in my head and, and I, last night I quickly kind of tried to draft it to three slides so, so there might be some holes but I'm anyway going to present it. So. So the basic idea would be that, that when you boot the system, there's like, like a root session that, that, that is there for the whole, whole, whole boot cycle. And, and when you open the TPM, it, it, it all, by default, it, it will always use the root session. And the keyring would always use, use the root session. So it's, the session here means like, like a collection of transient objects. So, so that's the kind of units for swapping here. And then, then, then we would add like a new yoctol. Or actually there doesn't exist any yoctol for the TPM. So that when you call this new session yoctol, it would create a new session that would be completely isolated from, from the other session. And it's, it's like a one-shot call so that we can have like a very thin daemon in the user space that, that just do some access control and, 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 and sends, sends this file descriptor through Unix socket to a client and, and you cannot kind of, kind of go away from, from, from the created session. And TPM2 spec defines necessary tools to actually do the swapping. So there, there, there's, there's load command and save command for, for loading and saving transient objects. And, and there's this capability command that gives, for each command it will give the number of transient handles ta taken by the command and, and, and read returned by the response. So we can use that data to, when, we, when, when we virtualize the handles. And I, I think, well, at least for the first implementation, I'm planning to use, create, use one search memory file for, for per session for swapping, swapping the data when, when the context is, is, sorry, the session is switched. Even for the simplest implementation, we need, this, we need to have, have this virtual physical substitution. You, you might think that, that if, you, if you do like really trivial implementation where you just every time, well, for efficient implementation, you, you would probably want to swap stuff like lazily so that if the space runs out, you swap something. But for trivial implementation, you might think that, that if you just swap everything out and, and load everything from the new session. You wouldn't need, a, need this, this virtual physical mapping, but, but I'm st still going to use it even for the most trivial implementation because specification does not give any guarantees in which order the ha transient handles are allocated. So, When we, when we have like a session open and we like create a tra oops, 
transcend handle. Uh, when it's created, the virtual handle and, and, and the physical handle are, are set to the same value. But when then, then, then some other session comes in, and the session swap it, and when it's loaded, the physical handle might be different, so, so we replace, replace the value of the physical handle to the value that it got. So, and and then, then, we, then we use this mapping to substitute the handle, handles as, as, as user space sends commands and, and, and we receive responses from, from the TPM. Uh, you start off with virtual and physical handle the same. Yep. Then you swap out the key, but you keep the virtual handle and you try to swap it in as the key changes physical handle. Aren't we we're going to run into the problem if you create a second key and it has a physical handle the same as some old virtual handle? Now we have a clash. No, not, not, I don't, I don't, I don't think so because, because I keep the rest constraint here that for one session the, all, all the transient objects must must be at, must must fit at the same time to the you know to the TPM DRAM. I'd still feel happier if we had a different namespace of the virtual handle. Uh, I, I don't think we have that class. But but well, we can take it offline. We, we can take it offline, and and for 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 the fir first proof of concept implementation, I can try with this approach, and maybe maybe when we test that, we, we will find such classes, and then we then we you know define different namespace for virtual handles. But but at this point, I don't believe that there could be such such class. But but no. Yeah, it's it's still in proposal phase, so who knows? Okay, and there there are like there 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 is at least this get capability with with cap handles parameter that gives in in handles in the body. So we need 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 special handling for that command. So we actually have to touch the body, but I think there was some other, but there are at most like three commands that need, need such, such special cases. It's Mont, Mont in the audience. It's, do you remember? There was some other. I, I, yeah, I, I think there were, there, there were like three, three commands. Yeah. Okay, and then I have a sequence diagram. <laughs> so this is would be this would be the basic flow that I don't I don't really know what 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 the TSS message would be, but but the basic idea would be that that the application we have like this really 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 thing resource manager daemon that only does like basically like access control. So we. Ask, ask, ask for a new session. It will do maybe probably some access control stuff there. That can can I can I is this UID or or smack label or whatever allowed to have a TPM session? If it is, we we open the TPM device. We call the Yoctol, so we we have like a new fresh new session and. And, and, and then we send the file descriptor back and close, close the original file descriptor. That, then after that, there's no IPC com communication with the resource manager. So it, it will be like, like really, really, really thin component. And actually, in this scheme, the TSS could be like, just like a shared library that the application uses.
so, so we need we, we need some 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 data structure that contains the mapping, the shared memory file, and and all the data needed needed for for a session. Well, it, it's it's a pointer to that session, basically. Right. Okay. Right. okay, that was it. <laughs> Any questions? Well, I already asked it, but I'll ask it again for public. This is for TPM 2.0. We still need a resource manager. Yes, but 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 I but but I mean. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But does it, does it have to be in the kernel? Well, I mean, I mean, it's a like like a le, 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 legacy platform in a way. So would would it really make sense to do such implementation in, into the kernel at this point? Right. Well, you, you kind of have one if, if you're dealing with user space. Uh, CSD actually has a resource manager. It does. I've just taken it apart. It actually will not swap out easily. Well, it was supposed to. I know. It's <laughs> that apparently it's missing. Okay. Whether it works or not, it's another story. Okay. You tell me it doesn't work. All right. It's, it's not that it doesn't work. There's no implementation. I was actually looking for the command that can actually take a key out of the TPM and just Any more questions? No, this is hard. Let's go and fix it. Yeah.